Welcome back to another podcast from the women's self-defense community. Today, we're going to be sharing a success story of an 11-year-old girl who happened to outsmart her abductor. All right, I've got Tracy Arlington with me. And one of the things, Tracy, that we share in our classes, and you do a particularly good job, is what to do when or how to avoid being abducted when you're walking along the street. Give us a preview of what you teach, and then we're going to watch a video and see what she did. Okay, yeah. You know, I always share with the kids my five safety tips. Don't be alone. <laughs> if you're walking to school alone and there's a bunch of people around you, well, that's okay. But don't be alone. We always say be aware of your surroundings. Don't stop and listen to a stranger. Parents, stop teaching your kids. Don't talk to strangers. It's don't even stop and listen. Walk against traffic. Do not walk with the flow of traffic. And you'll see why in a minute. And then last but not least, I teach the kids, your voice is your biggest weapon. Noise attracts attention. That's great. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and kick right off. And let me describe the scene here for you a little bit. Is that this car in the center right here, this silver car, this is actually going to be the criminal who tries to abduct an 11-year-old girl walking to school. He's getting ready to take a route to force this car to move out of the way. And right behind here, you're going to see our, our heroine here who ends up doing everything right and get away from this guy. Let's take a look and go through the video. You're going to see this guy here, the bad guy. He makes a U-turn in the middle of the street. And right there, you see that our heroine continues to walk right by the car here. And then we're going to see what's going to happen. Then we're going to go over this and do play by play. The guy gets out. He starts to chase her and she runs off. He has to admit defeat. Now look at him trying to innocently yeah. walk back to the car like he did nothing wrong. So let's take a look at this again. And we're going to rewind and see what's going on. So Tracy, start telling me about why you teach people to walk against traffic. Well, you, if you're walking with traffic, so if she had been on the right side of the road, the cars would have been going the same direction. That's when you can be followed. Somebody could pull up cut you off. I've even heard stories where the car pulled up and waited for the child to walk by the car as they're pretending to look at their tire and grab the child and throw them in. I tell the kids, if you see a car start to slow down, you think, well, I think this person's going to ask me a question. That's when you want to start jogging because you're going the direction that you want to go. You're Maybe she was walking towards her school He's going the opposite direction. So if he's going to chase her, he's going to be leaving her, leaving his car there. And as we saw in the video, he gave up pretty quickly the minute she started running. Okay. So that's interesting because the way he's setting up now, the first red flag is he's driving on the wrong side of the road. Correct. And so he's forced this, this silver Jeep here to go around him. But the reason why is now he is going to take a U-turn in front of her. Uh -huh. And so by her walking on that side of the street, she's immediately identified something's wrong here, correct? Yeah, but it looks like, you know, he's made a U-turn because he wants to talk to her. And that would be a point that I would want my students to realize is, and I know you're going to tell her story in a minute. This this girl was extremely aware but, you know, be aware when it looks like somebody is purposely trying to pull over to talk to you. And and to, to your point, if I can pull right here as a attacker, then my side of the car, I'm literally right next to her right now. So I can try to talk with her. Or as we see here, there's no talking involved. She walks by and he immediately exits the car and starts to grab, try to grab her. But she yeah. runs off. And just to prove an interesting point, kids, you can outrun dorky adults like this guy. So if you it's, take a look at it like that, you need to run and you need to escape. Right, right. So, we call right. it the uh, plan A. Plan A is stranger approaches me, run, don't stop and listen, run, yell, use your voice, start yelling, stranger, you know, 911, help 911. But it's really important to get stranger in there because look at the, all the apartments that are around her right now. If she had just been screaming, they would have thought, oh, there's some kids playing on the way to school. But if she had been yelling, you know, stranger, help 911, noise attracts attention. 
Very good. So let me give you the backstory on this. <clears throat> this young girl, she's 11 years old, and she tells the backstory that she actually saw this same person on campus earlier. So wow. she already thought it was weird because it didn't look like he belonged on campus and he was walking around. So she knew it. But as you can see in the tent right here, it's hard to actually see who is in the car at all. So my first tip off is he's now coming the wrong way in a way that I think from your standpoint, I could readily think that someone could pull up and, and talk to me. If I'm an 11 year old girl, like you said, I'm not going to even listen to strangers. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I don't like that this person drives up on the sidewalk and I'm still walking towards them. I don't know what their condition is. I don't know what their intent is, but that's me as an adult. So how do we teach our kids right now to recognize this danger early? Tracy, you got any tips on that? Yeah, you know, I always teach the six arm length rule. So believe it or not, I heard from a few of my police friends that, you know, a safe distance from a stranger is about 20 feet. They're not going to want to chase you if you're, you know, more than 20 feet away, especially if you're yelling. So um, that's kind of unrealistic. So I always tell the kids, you know, the six arm length rule, keep a stranger or a car more than six arm lengths away. So as he's driving down the road and she's walking the opposite direction, as soon as he slows down is when she if she would want to create that space. So that would have meant walking up on the grass. Right. And that's my same suggestion, uh -huh. too, is I don't know what this person is going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to surmise that as she gets here, she recognizes the guy. Yes. And so now she all and then she's looking back and look, he reaches for her arm to grab her and she pulls it in and starts running. So very close call right there. Very close call. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about what she could have done if she had been grabbed because um, we teach, you know, plan A, you run, go find safe adults, yell, attract attention. Plan B, if they grab you and there's no motion involved, like maybe she could have gotten a really good shin kick in or maybe even um, an eye strike. But see, there's there's a lot of motion going on right now. She's running, he's running. So if he had grabbed her wrists, the best thing she could have done if she couldn't have got away is to go down to the ground and start kicking and screaming because or yelling because then he's not going to try to bend over and pick her up and put her in that car. She's 11. And then while you're down on the ground, you're yelling, you're kicking to the groin, the knees. If he's dumb enough to bend over, she could have kicked him in the throat or the face. So that going to the ground probably would have saved her life. It, you know, God forbid he had grabbed her. Right. And that's what we teach is don't go to the secondary crime scene. My biggest threat right now as a defender is I cannot be taken in his car. Right. <clears throat> Regardless of what he says and what he threatens, I cannot get into the car. To your point, Tracy, she can literally sit down and face him. And mm -hmm. now she's she is decidedly more difficult to try to drag into her car or his car. So I try to remind people, remember when your uh, when your sweet child was two and three years old and they have a temper <laughs> tantrum in the grocery store, suddenly they weigh like 150 pounds. You can't pick them up. So right. that's what we teach. In fact, Tracy, you call it your what? Going Chihuahua crazy. Going you Chihuahua know? crazy. It's right. not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. And that's why Chihuahuas are so fierce. And we use the Chihuahua as a teaching tool. You don't have to be big. You just have to be loud and, and, uh, Nuts. <laughs> All right. So we celebrate everything she did right. And we want to use it as a cautionary tale for people. But uh -huh. I think a lot of times it's it's instructive to see how someone succeeded versus how someone failed. What I do you say it. to that? Yeah. And I'll defer to you, but we teach 90% of self-defense is awareness her awareness skills were, you know, impeccable when she was on that on that campus. And maybe you could talk a little bit more about that. Well, young children are difficult because they just they've got such a trusting understanding of adults and the world at this point. But I think it's a sad statement that we have to teach our kids um, to be aware of what's going on 
and this is what my personal experience has been us as adults, I say, we want to work on abduction reduction. We don't want our kids stolen. And yet the kids, mostly they're just afraid of Johnny, who's two grades earlier. He's down at the end of the block, beating them up and taking their, their yeah. lunch money or taking their shoes or whatever. So there's a different set. And I think we run into a problem with especially good kids that are taught to be deferential to their elders and mm -hmm. respect people is it's, it's somewhat more difficult. They need to have the permission to be able to resist. And then yes. you can't talk about it. You have to role play. And that's what you do a good, a good job on Tracy is you role play with your kids. How can I do that with my kids to make sure that I'm helping? Well, the first thing I would suggest, if possible, is to get them into a self-defense class that's, that is focused on children's self-defense. I'm a martial artist. You're a martial artist. That's not always going to work for children. You know, a, a, in ju an eight-year-old child in jujitsu probably isn't going to be able to take someone down your size <laughs> until they're a bit older. So really focus on what children's self-defense looks like. You might even have to, you know... Uh, pull up some videos on YouTube. But the most important thing is to teach them if they can't get away, they need to go down to the ground, have a self-defense temper tantrum, go chihuahua. So sneak up on them. That's what I used to do with my kids. I'd hide behind the drapes. We called it mommy ninja. And then I would jump out and I'd grab them. I'd either pull them <laughs> or I'd come up behind them, put my hand over their mouth. I'd like I'm pushing them into a car or when they were really little, I'd pick them up. We teach a technique called slippery mermaid, wiggly mermaid. Mermaid has legs today where the child is dropping their weight and they're wiggling and they're kicking, you know, kid techniques. But sneaking up on them is the best way to teach them, like you said, through role play. You know, and Michelle De La Rosa in Chicago does something similar and she's great at it. So I look at mo female instructors that are moms and they're really, really helpful versus, you know, men, maybe, you know, male instructors. So shop around and find someone that you like and you trust and then yeah. get your kids in the program. They're going to have fun and it's going to save their life someday. Yeah. And if they're interested in the martial arts, I highly recommend it because it's uh, it's consistent training. You know, they're going to learn after a while to react without even thinking. Uh, and I like to say to people, when you find a karate school, ask them, ask the, the instructor, how much street defense do you teach in here? Do you teach abduction defense? Because you don't want to sign up to, at a school that's just teaching katas. Right. Just competition oriented. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a whole section right there. How do you recognize uh, what the school does, but ask questions, ask questions and get your kids involved. They're going to have a great time anyway. And it's a lot of fun. It gives people a lot of body awareness. And it's interesting when we end up teaching firearms, martial artists do a lot better because they're used to moving their body through space and having good balance and mobility. So it's interesting. There's a lot of good things that come out of having your kids do martial arts. Anything yeah. to add, Tracy? Yeah, I'm just going to say, parents, keep tuning into our podcast because eventually we'll be posting the techniques that we teach children. We'll have it on video for you. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Tracy, again. And All right, everybody, great to see you. And then so everybody, she... if you need, need more information, go to womenselfdefensecommunity.com. Awesome. So Tracy, tell me how to get to your, your self-defense site. It's uh, playitsafedefense.com. Great. And they can get, parents can get information there about what you're teaching, correct? Yeah. And if you follow us on social media, Instagram or Facebook, then I post a lot of teaching tutorials. Terrific. Thank you so much again, Tracy. Bye. All right. Thanks, Brad. Take care.